to my, uh, I do this once a year, my class on natural health care for animals. Uh, so why natural health care for animals? Well, <clears throat> animals require a lot of the same things as people do to stay healthy. I mean, you've got to have good nutrition. Can you feed an animal processed junk food and expect it to be healthy? Nope. It's not, I mean, no. They, in fact, they probably respond worse than people to that. They need a properly functioning nervous system and proper organ motion uh, for, that, for that animal to work right. And so the way that I, when you'll, you'll see me uh, evaluate Cindy's dog here in a few minutes, but I evaluate him quite similar to people. So let's look at what a, a dog should eat. Um, one of the better foods out there is this uh, Na Nature's Domain Salmon and Sweet Potato from Costco. And that has a lot of what animals eat. Now, that's the, not the only food out there for animals, but it's high in proteins and minerals and low in plant lectins. So, you know, you, you might be thinking, well, what the heck is a lectin? You know, well, lectins are, are the part of plants that protect it from insects. The problem is, is that plant-derived food for animals usually contains lectin and it tears up their GI tract. And it causes allergies, it causes fur not to be very good, and a lot of the foods, the, the pet foods, uh, are, are plant-derived and have a lot of lectins in them, so you do not want to give a, an animal a food that's high in plant lectins. And so like... For example, sweet potatoes are very low in lectins. Something that's really high would be, uh, uh, well, tomatoes. We don't have tomato-based dog food. The mm -hmm. green peppers, um, a lot of your, your lentils, your beans, um, wheat, very high in lectins. Mm -hmm. Grains uh, are very high in lectins. So we want to we feed our pets a low lectin type food. Now, you want to avoid sugar uh, in treats, cheap grain cereals, meat byproducts. <coughs> Some of those meat byproducts are not even digestible for animals. Gluten. Uh, animals can develop gluten sensitivities just like people. Artificial colors and flavors. I mean, there's no living thing that, that can uh, uh, live off or, or can, can get any value from an artificial color or flavor and chemical preservatives none of those things are good for animals and, and if you go out and you see like and I realize you can't you can't feed your your pet raw food all the time I, I get that but if you look at what animals eat out in the wild you know they eat raw food they eat meat and raw food it really gets raw food yeah yeah that's what they eat you know, uh, uh, you know, you don't see an animal uh, like a, a dingo out in Australia, you know, prancing around with a bag of Oreos in its mouth. You know, you just don't see that. And so, so even though domesticated animals have a little bit different diet than wild animals and wild um, type dogs, they still need a lot of the same things. Um, Dr. Bill is is a guy that taught me. He's a veterinarian that that uh, uh, taught me a lot about uh, uh, working on animals. And he has what's called a lectin scavenger, which is really good for dogs and cats who eat a lot of processed foods, who have bad allergies and poor quality fur. And cats should only ever eat wet food, never wow. dry food. Oh, yeah. really? Yep. Yeah. Now, high lectin foods, uh, grains, uh, legumes, uh, nuts, seeds. A lot of your nuts have uh, cashews have a lot of lectins in them. Uh, fruits, you know, some fruits, melons, like corn. Uh, any corn-based food has a lot of lectins. Cucumbers, eggplant. Now, not all of these you find in pet food, but some of it you do. Uh, uh, foods that are very low in lectins are um, amaranth, some of your um, grain-fed meats, 
uh, uh, low lectin legumes, um, some of your like coconut, macadamia, pecans, walnuts are very low in lectins, uh, and um, your fruits and vegetables. So wild fed protein, very low in lectins. Poultry, fish, eggs, uh, uh, ostrich, turkey, that type of thing, very low in lectins. So the most important part of natural health care for animals, by the way, did you pass out notes? Mm -hmm. Everybody's got notes, okay. Mm -hmm. They do. Uh, uh, is correcting vertebral subluxations. We is this? I don't have notes either. They were right. Oh, what did I not? Sorry. Okay, all the slides are in here. I'm sorry. It's okay. I didn't I, see anybody with notes. I got, yeah, I got the clipboards. I didn't get the notes. I'm sorry. I'm not doing my job. Yeah. Sorry. And Jason. So Jason some notes. Yeah. Oh, you got okay. some? Okay. Be careful my water. Okay. Put it over here. Okay. So, um, Chiropractors define the vertebral subluxation complex as a misalignment of a vertebra, the limit of mobility of a joint causing irritation to the surrounding nerves. Now, that's a real simplified definition. Uh, I'm, we're going to talk about a little bit more sophisticated definition in a minute. But if a subluxation exists in an animal, the animal loses normal flexibility of its spine. Uh, it affects its performance. Uh, and it gets stiff and has muscular tension. So reduced mobility between two vertebrae can affect the nerves that lead the spinal cord uh, uh, between these adjacent vertebrae. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know what I meant there. Uh, but the resulting nerve interference causes changes in the function or health of the tissue innervated by the nerve so that ligaments muscles, the surrounding tissue is going to be affected if the nervous supply of that area is compromised. Now, vertebral subluxation can, uh, complex can manifest anywhere in the spine of any mammal. Where you see it most, where I see it most, is up here in the upper part of the neck, then the lower thoracic and lumbar and sacral area. I see a lot of it in those areas, which is why animals have so many problems with their back legs, because that's that's the area that innervates your back legs. It can create neurological deficit along any spinal ver nerve and actually cause other problems other than, than uh, it can cause internal issues as well as, as uh, neuromusculoskeletal issues. So subluxations or any chronic stress that the animal undergoes will ultimately affect the brain. Okay, so self-regulation in the animal, what what I'm just going to tell you here is this. You don't even have to read that. When an animal is under too much stress, whether it's emotional stress or physical stress, or they've got um, uh, a lot of arthritis in their spine or subluxation, that actually results in brain dysfunction. And what you may find out in an animal is that the first thing that, that you uh, uh, can tell when an animal is subluxated is they just don't act right. Okay? They may not be limping. They may not be. They may not look like they're in any pain. They just don't act right because a subluxation actually affects brain function. We know that for a fact. It happens in people. It will happen in animals. So um, the ultimate problem in the animal may be more in the brain than anywhere else. So this is what I said. When your animal begins acting strange, it may be a strong indicator of spinal issues affecting brain function. So now we have absolute scientific proof that adjusting the spine literally resets the brain. It happens in people, it happens in animals. Mm. Now, getting your dog adjusted periodically will prevent that issue. Now, who wants to have your dog's back legs not working and have to put them on, a, on wheels? And, and there's a lot of people that do that, yeah. and they don't know that chiropractic can help. So we want to prevent that, and we want to get the dog's legs working well before they stop working, <laughs> yeah. because then it's harder to fix yeah. when they're in this position. Um, 
Here's the autonomic nervous system in a person. You see this in, a, in an animal, too. You see all the organs of the body are innervated through the spine. Well, that's true in an animal. So an animal can develop liver problems, stomach problems, kidney issues, bladder issues, just like people. So when an animal is given a spinal adjustment, the neurological short circuit is restored back to the on position so the normal nerve flow can be restored, so the animal's able to heal. Um, so the technique that I use is um, uh, uh, visceral or um, veterinary orthopedic manipulation. It's very low force. We use an instrumentation, which can, uh, it, it's impossible to hurt the animal. Uh, so how do we determine where a subluxation is in an animal? Well, there's several ways that we can do that. Um, I can do it by feel, but one of the ways we do it is just by doing what's called a diagnostic pass over the spine of the animal with the adjusting instrument. And, and what happens is when you see the animal just start to jerk, you know, subconsciously, you know you hit a subluxation. That is a good indicator that uh, uh, muscle and skin movements uh, where the animal, you know, it, it's a reflex. That's an indicator of the subluxation in that area. So we usually make three passes over the spine of the animal. Uh, the animal may uh, show immediate changes or they may just yawn or they may just lay down and go to, you know, want to go to sleep, and I've seen that happen. Uh, often the pet will spontaneously move better or the we any weakness is less. So here's examples of some typical canine cases that resolve well with animal chiropractic. So any acute disease that doesn't involve paralysis where the spinal cord is actually cut, um, cervical or ventral flexion of the spine, which means that uh, you know, the animal's walking around like this, or like this, or like this, and uh, it doesn't involve some sort of traumatic injury or the spinal cord is actually damaged. Uh, another thing that can cause that is brain tumors, and I've seen some animals with brain tumors, and not only do they not act well, but they don't respond at all to chiropractic when they got a brain tumor. Um, shifting foreleg lameness, uh, unilateral rear leg lameness, um, uh, and degenerative myelopathy where uh, uh, they just start getting weak all over. So here's another one, canine wobbler's disease where they just wobble when they walk due to spinal degeneration in the neck. Hip dysplasia is another one that responds well to animal chiropractic. So um, some examples of, of cat, and I've, I've adjusted some cats, and uh, wry neck or anterior cervical disease where the cat walks around like this. Now the cat that I adjusted, I only adjusted a couple of them. Uh, they were just, it was sort of failure to thrive, and the cat just was not, had no energy, wasn't, wasn't, um, just acting normal, and we adjusted that cat, and it, it just came out of it very quickly. Um, lameness, lack of leg strength, and somatovisceral diseases. Uh, so, like like incontinence would be a classic somatovisceral problem in an animal, where they just become incontinent. Well, where does that come from? Where does incontinence come from? Lack of exercise. Well, most animals get exercise. I mean, diet. It, it comes from vertebral subluxations mm -hmm. in the uh, lower thoracic area. That's what causes most incontinence. And when you adjust them, they'll clear that up. Okay. Uh, uh, so any kidney disease, um, things like that can really be helped with chiropractic. Now, here's some things to avoid in a small animal after they've received an adjustment. So you don't want to give them cage rest. They need to move around at least five times a day with bathroom trips outside. I mean, most people don't have any problem taking their dogs outside to go to the bathroom. I certainly wouldn't. Uh, you want to avoid them going up and down stairs, okay? 
and jumping off couches and jumping into cars and jumping from the back seat to the front seat, not good. Okay, they should that that will throw them out of adjustment pretty fast. So, what are some of the um, visceral problems that that can uh, be helped with best uh, VOM? Bowel disease, hypothyroidism, kidney disease, dermatitis, allergies, and even some food allergies. Uh, with the large animals, lameness, gait or abnormalities, lack of neck flexibility, and just poor performance. Um, we have solid evidence, with people at least, Research evidence shows when you adjust an athlete, their performance goes up. Their vertical jump gets better. Hand-eye coordination gets better. Their speed gets better. It's actually a very good study that was done on athletes. So we've seen that happen in animals, although we may not have the exact studies to show that that happens. We see it happen. Uh, here's some other uh, issues that can be helped with horses. Uh, and uh, some of the other somatovisceral problems that can be happening, colic, ulcers, allergies, just head shaking. Coughing is another one. I, I uh, uh, adjusted a horse just a couple of years ago. It was constantly hacking, and that really made a difference for that animal. Uh, uh, now, here's an interesting fact. VOM adjusting on bulls has been known to increase semen production 10 to 15 percent. Well, that's you know money in their in the rancher's pocket, you know. Um, so, uh, how about low level laser? That's something we do on animals as well. Now, you can really uh, accelerate the healing process with low level laser and expand the things you can do. So, how does a laser work? Uh, during treatment of the tissue with laser, um, the laser actually makes the cells work much more efficiently, and it affects the cells at the cellular level. So low-level laser all enters the tissue, alters membrane permeability, and it makes the mitochondria of the cell function better and actually creates physiological changes in the cells of the animal or the, the person. So mitochondria are power plants, and if, if our mitochondria are working, that's a, a good way to get disease. Okay, so uh, low-level laser affects mitochondria. So what are the tissue effects of low-level laser? It accelerates cell reproduction and growth. Uh, faster wound healing. Uh, increased metabolic activity. Uh, it helps enzymes work better. Greater oxygen to blood cells. More effective immune response uh, by the laser. It reduces the formation of scar tissue after surgery. Increased vascular activity. So um, it allows the effective tissues to have better blood circulation. St stimulated nerve function. So it brings uh, uh, areas like uh, numb areas back to life and it optimizes, optimizes muscle action. Uh, and it, last but not least, um, all of these things have to do with inflammation and the immune system. So it really, really helps with inflammation um, and uh, uh, the, the cells that produce it. And it, it actually, it also increases nerve conduction rates. Um, so the energy transfer to the cells increases mitochondrial and energy production. That's why I laser animals, because even though it looks like I'm just shining a light on the animal, there's a lot more going on when I laser an animal in terms of their cellular, their, their ability to heal. So... Um, the combined effects of adjusting and lasering an animal has a very powerful effect on the animal. So when your animals are, are have issues, okay, I recommend natural health care first, pharmaceutical second, and surgery last. I'm not saying those last, second two things 
can't be important because they can be. But uh, just like in people, natural health care first, pharmaceutical second, surgery last. So let's go ahead and adjust Cindy's little dog, okay? I'm going to get the laser because we've got to laser that little thing too. <laughs> I'm going to take this one home with me, Cindy. Put it in my bag. <laughs> yes, you will. You fit in my bag. She part like poodle with this curly hair. No, she's a full, uh, full, full mini schnauzer. Yeah. Okay, Cindy, you want to bring yeah. her over here? <laughs> she go home with you too. What um, uh, what animals she... wouldn't you you work on? Like, what's the most exotic? I, I wouldn't work on a lion that was angry. Oh, well, okay, but I, but I mean like parakeet, uh, parakeets, <laughs> right. fish. Uh, oh yeah, I, I, you know, you can work on uh, birds. Snakes, I've known people uh, work on birds. Okay. I've known people work on snakes. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Snakes. Okay. <laughs> they got more bass too. Okay, so we're gonna start out with a little atlas. There we are. You're being really good for me, aren't you? Huh? He's done that before. And we're just going to come down his spine. Now, do you go between the vertebrae or right, right on, on top? Right on the right on top. And I watch that. See that? See how I just go straight See up. that response that he's mm. getting? That's a subluxation. Mm. That or he's going to jump off the table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot there. Yeah, she, this dog is subluxated. <laughs> okay, we're going to go like, first watch it. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, there, you're doing good. Come back again. <laughs> and we're going to reach. There we are. Cindy is, is um, what's, your, what's your name? I'm sorry. What's Re her name again? Reese. Reese. Reese, yeah. Has, has Reese had any issues that you know of? No. Recently? Other, no. She's very active. I would say emotional. She probably has, we had to put one of our dogs down yesterday. And she's been looking for her. Oh. Okay, one more time. Yeah. One oh. more time, everybody. There we go. Is there a way you can tell if a dog can't see very good or can't hear? Usually the owner will let me know that. You see, it's real easy on the animal. Now, obviously, I have this turned way up for a horse or a bull. Uh-huh. Now... The laser, then we just okay, let's see. okay, so what this dog really needs is the spine laser. Is there any way you can tell if the legs are the same length or one's longer or shorter than the other? Um, I've never done a leg check on a dog. Okay. okay. Um, a what check, Dr. Leg, leg check. A leg. Leg. Can you do anything for neuropathy? In a dog? Yeah. Lily's got neuropathy. Really? How long has she had it? How well... Apparently she's had it for some time, but that's what the vet told us Saturday. That she, that's why she falls at home because she can't. She doesn't have the feeling in her feet. Hmm. You know, um, there's a supplement we should check her for called alpha lipoic acid, which okay. is really good for neuropathy. Okay. Uh, we'd have to see if that would work for a dog or not. Is there a way a dog can get diabetes? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, my oh, dog sure. had diabetes. Really? Just yeah. overfeed them. Oh, okay. Yeah. You feed them the wrong kind of food, they'll get it. That's yeah. why we do all of the all yeah, our dog, feed a, a well, dog puppy food, you know, that's not good. Fish 
I mean, you know, if you have kids around that feed them Orioles all the time. I had kids that would feed the dog every time they went by. Yeah. And that was six kids. <laughs> that dog got huge. Dog's food. Well, now, why can't cats have dry cat food? It's not designed for it. Oh, okay. What if you have a bowl of water and they drink water? They drink water either before or after. Yeah. It, well, if you look at cats' teeth, how sharp they are. Yeah. They're not designed for to eat They're crunchy. more for birds and squirrels yeah. and rats and mice. Okay. What, do you, what do you do when they're too persnickety to eat the wet food? No, no, no what snickers. Do you, no. What do you do when they're too persnickety to eat the wet food? Well, I don't know. You know, that's... Yeah. You can't help but they express what they feel. Okay. Does brushing a dog's hair, like a hundred brushes every day, does that stimulate anything that helps them? Uh, well, it probably, you know, bond you to the dog, but it's not going to fix it. It was good for circulation, I know, when I had a dog. Okay, so she you know, like grease it. is all done. It's all okay. she needs. Yeah. Sorry she was so wild for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spot. yeah. She's good as new. Yeah. Like you. you better check to see you if want she's more? in uh -huh. concrete. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that felt good. She's saying, thank you, Paul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's really subluxated, like, in through here. Did you guys see her? Yeah. All the, all the uh, she reactions relaxed. she got right in here. Yeah. Really subluxated in through she here. She was so. enjoying it. She goes, and put dogs, some more. Animals <laughs> like to get adjusted. They mm -hmm. I have a uh, full-grown Doberman Pinscher that just loves coming in and getting adjusted. And and the owner says, it's just amazing that that dog is so good around me because it's a one-man dog, but it comes right up, lets me adjust it because they like it. It feels good. Okay, you're all set, buddy. Good. So, any other questions? Are you shake or anything? Well, <laughs> I've asked them during the whole show, and I tell you, that's that's quite a deal. Yeah, okay, good. Can that's I, that's he, all I have then. You can make are, a dog last longer and live longer, right? Yeah, yeah the vet that trained me, who's, who just, he's adjusted thousands and thousands of animals, he told me that uh, a dog will live 30% longer if he's adjusted periodically, and that 30% will be healthy. Mm, that's three or four years. Yeah. 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 30% longer. Wow. So, um, you know, that's, you know, for people that want to keep, and you don't have yeah. to, you know, get them adjusted like, you know, once a week, you know, for maintenance, like maybe four times a year if you're just going to maintain it, but you're, you know, they don't have a problem, but you just want to. You know, maybe, you know, four times a year. Give them a checkup. Yeah. Now, if they got issues, you know, like Ann's dog, that's different. You know, that's, you know, they need to be adjusted more. And yeah. she comes. She's got arthritis in her back legs, and so sometimes she doesn't have the use of her back legs. But after we go home from her adjustment, she starts running. And mm -hmm. running and running down the sidewalk, back and forth in the house. And I emailed Paul and said, what did you do? Because <laughs> <laughs> he's right. just so different dogs. All right. Yeah, so. yeah. So it, uh, chiropractic works so well in animals. And the thing about animals is that um, they don't have, like, uh, they don't have an emotional filter going on where they... They don't go, well, I think I feel better. They are either better or they're not, yeah. you know. One or the one. What? I mean, I'll say one way or another. One way or another. They don't have, like, you know, they, they, they don't imagine themselves better. Yeah. They, they're either better or they're not better, yeah. you know. That's one of the things I like about animals because yeah. you get a real true picture yeah. of what's mm -hmm. going on. Now, the thing is when you, not all animals are that good, I can tell you that. And I've gotten bit before. Oh. And um, some of those animals wiggle so much that it's hard to hard to adjust them. Hard to get them settled. Down. Yeah, it's like adjusting a two year old that doesn't want to. You know, yeah. things are going to get a shot. Don't want to sit still. You know? yeah. So so not all not all animals are that good, but a lot of them I just once you get them adjusted several times, they know what they're going to get. They settle down quite a bit. They yeah. they don't mind they don't mind it at all. Yeah. They like it. 
Yeah. It's like I love getting adjusted yeah. personally, you know. So yeah. I think animals are like that too. So anyway, that's all I have for you. Thanks, Cindy, okay. so much yeah. for yep. bringing your dog in. <laughs> and uh, good. Amen. Thanks.